Using the 3GS library is fun and quite easy. It's much easier than writing your own WebGL code. Before we jump into the first example, let's go over some key features. Every 3GS application needs the 3GS library loading. Then you'll need to create a scene. This is where you'll add objects and lights. You'll need a camera to allow you to view the scene from a particular location. And you'll need a renderer. And in this course, we're always going to use the WebGL renderer. When you add an object that you can see, you'll be adding what the 3GS library calls a mesh. When creating a mesh, you need to supply two parameters. Geometry, that's the vertices, faces and UVs, and a material. If your material uses lighting, you'll also need a light. For our first page, we're going to use CodePen. Enter this URL in your browser address bar. If you're unfamiliar with CodePen, then let me explain. It allows you to test out a web page very quickly. You can enter HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Since we're only interested in the JavaScript, let's adjust the layout. Press Change View and click the bottom right button. This sets all the code to the right, while the main web page is the white screen on the left. In the JS panel, click the drop down arrow and select Maximize JS Editor. Great! Notice that there is already some template stuff in there. Let me explain this. Firstly, we're creating some global variables. We have a scene, camera and renderer. Creating a 3GS scene is easy. All we do is enter new 3.scene, open and close brackets. All 3GS classes and methods are prefixed with the word 3 in capital letters. After creating the scene, we create a camera. In this case, it's a perspective camera, so things further away from the camera will appear smaller, like in real life. When creating a perspective camera, it takes four parameters. The first value is the field of view, or FOV. This is given as a numeric value measured in degrees. The second parameter is the aspect ratio. In other words, the width of the rendered screen divided by its height. Since we're filling the entire window with the 3D content, we can use the global object window and its inner width and height values to calculate this value. The third and fourth parameters are the near and far values. Here we're using 0.1 for the near value, so if something is closer to the camera than 0.1 units, it will be cropped. And the far value is 1000, so something more than 1000 units away from the camera will also be cropped. Having created the camera, we create a renderer. In this case, a WebGL renderer, as promised. We do need to set the size of the renderer, which we do on line 8 of this template. The renderer will be invisible until its DOM element is added to the document body. The DOM element is actually an HTML5 canvas component. Suppose someone resizes the window, then the window.innerWidth and window.innerHeight may change. This affects two things, the size of the renderer and the aspect ratio of our camera. To ensure this is handled correctly, we add an event listener to the window. This calls the function onResize. Finally, we call update. If you look at the function update, it's very simple. It uses the browser function request animation frame. This takes a function as a parameter. The browser calls this function before the next screen repaint, which in practice means around 60 times a second. In the function, we use the renderer render method to paint the scene from the camera view. All well and good, but all I can see is a white screen. Remember, you're looking at a template. This is just the building blocks of a web app. Essentially, you will need to add this to any 3GS web app that you create. You might be wondering where 3GS is loaded. If you have been, then give yourself a pat on the back. Click the settings button and click the JavaScript button. This allows you to load external scripts and here you can see we're adding 
3.min.js. Now it's time to add your own code. Firstly, call init. Simply enter init home close brackets just above the init function definition. The white screen becomes black. Is that a mistake? Well, actually, no, it isn't. The default color for a 3GS scene is black. So we're now seeing the 3GS rendered scene. So why just black? The simple answer is we've not added any objects. Before we do, let's change the background color to a light gray. This is easily done by entering scene.background equals new 3.color open brackets 0x AA 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 close bracket. Now we have a light gray screen. Still not very interesting. Time to add an object. Enter const geometry equals new three box geometry open bracket one 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 close bracket. This creates the geometry of a box with each side of length one. We also need a material. Enter const material equals new three dot mesh basic material be careful of the upper and lower case, open brackets, curly braces, colour, colon, new 3 dot colour, open bracket, sky blue, close bracket, curly brace, close bracket. Now enter const box equals new 3 dot mesh with the parameters geometry material. And finally, add the box to the scene using scene.add box. Hey presto, a blue square in the centre of the screen. Not very impressive. Let's change the material to mesh standard material. Just change the basic to standard. Why does it go black? That's because a basic material ignores lighting and just paints the object using the colour that has been defined. But a standard material is much more complex and uses lighting. Let's add a light. Enter const light equals new three dot directional light. Then set its position to 0, 1, 2. And finally add this light to the scene. Now you have a lit object. But a square isn't showing it off to its best. First we need to make the box object a global variable. Add box to the global variables and remove the const from the box assignment. Now in the update function we can add box.rotation.y plus equals 0 0.01. Now we can really see we're dealing with 3D. See if you can add a couple more boxes to the left and right. You can use the same geometry and material. You just need to duplicate the box assignment code. Make sure you move the new boxes to the left and right using box2.position.x equals minus 1.5 and box3.position.x equals 1.5. Make these new boxes spin in the opposite direction to the first box. If you have trouble with this challenge, then a complete version of this is at this address. This video comes from my pack course. Find the course on Udemy by following the links in the description.